Hey everybody, Eric here with another DVD review, another wrestling DVD review I want to go over. This will be my second one. We did the Chris Jericho DVD to kick things off with this series. Uh, we're going to go now with another WWE set, uh, a set that kind of intrigued me. I actually bought it because it was on sale, wasn't really uh, seeking this DVD set out per se, but I uh, was kind of intrigued by what might be on it and was kind of looking forward to uh, getting to this one to review for sure. Uh, the second review I'm going to do is on WWE's Allied Powers, the world's greatest tag teams. Uh, this was their tag team compilation set. It was actually put out a little while ago. And uh, just going to go over the DVD, talk about what they included on it, how they presented it, the match choices, which matches are on there, which tag teams made the cut. I uh, definitely, uh, I think the most exciting thing for me viewing this DVD, I want to say out front, is that I was looking forward to seeing which tag teams actually made the cut which tag teams did not, especially with the WWE's revisionist history issues, uh, deciding to decide that uh, on a whim, basically, that, that teams didn't exist, don't exist, or acknowledge teams that really didn't actually matter, but to them, they want you to think they mattered. So uh, it's definitely a, an intriguing uh, angle to, to look at, you know, which tag teams actually wound up making the cut. So, you know, just some of the notes. I'm just going to go over some of the notes I jotted down while watching this one. Uh, it is a nine-hour set, three discs. Uh, it, it presented in a movie theater theme. Uh, they presented all the tag teams and, and kind of trailers, you would say, uh, where they would tell you which what tag team it was and then show you some clips uh, involving that tag team. And then some of the tag teams would be featured in actual matches that made it onto the DVD set. Uh, this DVD was actually hosted by The Miz and John Morrison. They were uh, the IT tag team in the WWE when this came out, and the WWE, of course, pushed them. Pretty hard as a tag team with the dirt sheet and other media aspects. So uh, they were pushed pretty hard on this DVD. It came off as kind of cheesy and almost a little disrespectful to some of those classic tag teams because they, of course, were their heel personas on this set, uh, which I kind of find, found annoying if I'm looking to you know pay homage to the previous tag teams. But at the same time, uh, it was all done kind of tongue-in-cheek too, and they definitely paid respect to the tag teams that deserved it the most. So... Um, I, while that wouldn't have been my choice for presenting the DVD, uh, it certainly wasn't a bad thing. Um, they basically just rolled through tag team after tag team. Um, the first tag team they talked about was the British Bulldogs. Thought it was a great place to start, a uh, great 80s tag team, and uh, they were actually featured in a match that made it on the set. The first match on the set, British Bulldogs versus the Hart Foundation from 1985 at Madison Square Garden. This was a classic mat wrestling battle. Uh, very lengthy match, though. I wasn't sure about them putting such a lengthy match as the first match you encounter on the set. Uh, kind of sets the tone. It makes you kind of worry how the rest of the DVD is going to play out. Uh, it's not rapid fire. You didn't go through a bunch of tag teams and then go to them. First tag team right off the bat gets a match, and it's a long one. And it's from the 80s, too. So uh, for some of the younger fans, they probably wouldn't enjoy that match. But for classic wrestling fans, you're definitely going to love that early Bret Hart match. Um, definitely Davy Boy Smith in that one as well. Um, so a very interesting choice, and the match itself was pretty good. Next uh, tag team featured was the Steiner Brothers. They were also featured in a match, a 1991 match from a Japan Super Show put on by WCW in their relationship with some of the Japan promotions. Uh, this was a pretty good match. Uh, the crowd, of course, was really into it. Interesting blend here of um, uh, the, the different styles. Both teams kind of had similar styles, but, uh, you know, with the Steiner brothers, uh, mm -hmm. they featured a couple different styles of wrestling with uh, Scott Steiner being a very powerful wrestler and Rick Steiner being a little bit more of a mat wrestler, I guess you would say. Well, their tag team counterparts, uh, Hiroshi Hasi, Hasai, I'm probably pronouncing, pronouncing that wrong, and Kensuke Sasaki. Uh, very entertaining tag team match, I thought. Uh, very... Uh, definitely a hidden gem, I would say. That's, that's one of the things I definitely noted from this one. Uh, very fascinating global showcase. And it was a, a blend of power and technique that was definitely entertaining um, from the early 90s. Uh, then Miz and Morrison, uh, I definitely noted here, they definitely poked fun at some of the upcoming tag teams, which I found kind of annoying at this point in the DVD set. But then they kind of broke things off into groups and kind of grouped some tag teams together uh, by styles. The first group they, they mentioned, uh, the aerial teams, as they, they, they put it. Uh, the first team they mentioned was Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood. This is going way back. They got a clip on there. The High Flyers from the AWA days. 
Jim Brunzel and Greg Gagne, um, and then the Fantastics, Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton, another very old tag team. And then the Killer Bees were featured in this group, and they actually had a match featured on the set, Jim Brunzel and B. Brian Blair. Uh, they had a match from 1987, two out of three falls, with Demolition. I thought it was uh, kind of curious that the Killer Bees had a match featured on this set. Not a team you immediately think of when you think all-time great tag teams. And uh, two out of three falls match against Demolition. I didn't think this was a very good choice. Uh, it didn't really showcase the, the Killer Bees' high-flying ways. And Demolition wasn't exactly your greatest tag team, uh, you know, as far as captivating an audience and putting on a match. They definitely played those characters well, uh, characters well and in the right roles, Demolition was entertaining. But they weren't exactly the greatest wrestlers, and uh, they didn't complement the style of uh, Killer Bees very well. So... Uh, curious choice there. Didn't really like this match. It was also really bad announcing. Um, Bruce Pritchard did this match with Mike and Duke. Not really right. Uh, not really sure who those people were. I hadn't heard them on any commentary in previous matches. I'm sure uh, wrestling purists and uh, people with a little bit more knowledge than me would probably know who those guys are. But uh, and actually, one of them was a woman. But uh, just not a very good match overall. I was kind of disappointed that this one was put in there. Uh, I look at Demolition nowadays as a less coordinated version of the APA, um, so it wasn't wasn't a very good match. Next tag team brought up the Hardy Boys. They were featured in a match from King of the Ring 99 against the Brood, which was Edge and Christian at that time, a very early Edge and Christian versus Hardy's match, uh, kind of a before they were stars, hidden gem. Um, a six spear by Edge at the end of the match, fast and fun. Uh, you didn't really get to see a whole lot, but it definitely showed what these two teams were when they initially became tag teams in the WWE. Next team on the board, the Fabulous Freebirds. They were featured in a match from World Class Championship Wrestling 1983. Uh, the Freebirds took on the Von Erichs, Kevin and Kerry. Um, very interesting match. It was a leather strap country whipping match. Uh, shows you what the times were back then and what promotion, regional promotion, they were working for. Lots of whipping, not much wrestling. I uh, didn't think this really showcased what the Freebirds were, but you could definitely tell from the crowd reaction to both teams that these two teams were really hot in the early 80s, especially in that territory, and a wild crowd in this one. Uh, then you had Brotherly Duos was the next grouping. The Von Erichs, Kevin, David, and Kerry, uh, they were wildly over in their promotion. The Minnesota Wrecking Crew, Ole and Arn Anderson, uh, they were definitely bruisers. Brothers of Destruction, Undertaker and Kane. Uh, I know my buddy Miles loved that team. The Valiant Brothers, going way back, Johnny and Jimmy. The Strongbows, Cheap J and Jules. The Smoking Guns, curious choice there. Billy and Bart Gunn made it on as the Smoking Guns. Terry and Dory Jr., the Funks, were featured. The Briscoes, Jack and Jerry, they were featured in an actual match. Uh, championship Wrestling from Florida, Briscoes versus Funks. It was a tape delay match because that's how wrestling was presented back then. And it was a clip of a match, so it wasn't in, in its entirety. So not a very good clip, uh, but it shows you what wrestling used to be and where the funks came from and how long they've been in the business. Next tag team mentioned Harlem Heat, uh, the, the brotherly duo there, featured in a match from Hog Wild 96, WCW Days versus the Steiners. That was a decent match. It was power versus power. Uh, but didn't really showcase a whole lot of what these teams were really about. So um, just kind of a decent match. Then you had the Midnight Express, Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton. Uh, they were managed by Jim Cornette. This team was almost more about Jim Cornette than it was the wrestlers in the ring. They were featured in a match from the Great American Ooh. Bash 1988 against the, Funtas or <laughs> the, Fun the Fantastics. Uh, it was title versus ten lashes uh, was the stipulation there. Cornette had to be put in a straight jacket before the match. It was almost... Entertaining just watching him have to be put in a straight jacket more than anything else. Um, the match itself showcased Cornette really well. Entertaining pacing considering the timing of this match uh, in the uh, chronological timeline of wrestling. It, it definitely a different style for the time. Uh, so definitely a, a match worth checking out, I would say. Um, if you're looking at, at, at where wrestling came from and how that style of wrestling wasn't featured a whole lot back then, but definitely made its way to prominence by now. Then there was the honorable mention section. You had Eminem making it in there, Billy and Chuck, the Hollywood Blondes, and the APA. And then the featured match in the honorable mention section was the Nasty Boys making it on there versus Public Enemy. 
from Super Brawl 96 in the WCW. Total carnage in this one. An absolute hardcore match. Uh, the definition of garbage wrestling. If you like that stuff, you're going to love this match. But uh, sloppy, not a whole lot of holds or moves by either team. Uh, total ECW ripoff done by the WCW guys. So uh, that's definitely a classic in the story of the, uh, the the wars between the three promotions at that time. but And then the final uh, team featured on disc one was the Rockers. They took on the Brain Busters in a match on this set from Madison Square Garden, 1989. Brain Busters being Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson during their run with the WWF. Michaels and Gennetti showed versatility in this match. Uh, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard wrestle a different style than the Rockers did, but both these teams really meshed really well. Uh, very interesting match, and it was fun seeing the Brain Busters actually wrestling outside their box, kind of, uh, as they kind of came from the NWA style wrestling, uh, taking on a high-flying, fast-paced team like the Rockers. So definitely a, a good good match there. Disc 2, uh, first team right off the bat was Demolition featured. They took on Strike Force. This was from Mania 4 in 1988. Strike Force was ten, uh, Tito Santana and Rick Martel. This wasn't really a very good match. Sloppy, lacked chemistry between the teams. Bad pacing as far as the, the elements of the story being told in this match. Mistakes and botched spots by both teams. Curious as to why this team this match actually made it on there and why this match is what represented Demolition's work. I, I didn't think it really put Demolition in a very good light. Then you had the Worldwide Attraction section of the DVD set. The Fabulous Rougeaus, Raymond and Jacques, uh, Ivan and Nikita Koloff made the uh, made the cut. The Bushwhackers, Luke and Butch from Australia. La Resistance actually made the set. Uh, thought that was interesting that they went in there. The U.S. Express, Mike Rotundo and Barry Windham, a classic team there. It wasn't together very long, I don't think. But and then a featured match: Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov versus the U.S. Express. This was from Mania One in 1985. A decent classic match. Kind of slow, though. Uh, this is where uh, the bad guys go over. Um, it was kind of entertaining, though, seeing uh, seeing uh, Nikolai Volkov try to sing the uh, Russian, the USSR anthem, as it would be. Uh, then the next team mentioned on there, the Dudley Boys. They were featured in a match from Survivor Series 01 against the Hardy Boys. This was the unification of the WWF and WCW titles uh, in a cage. Uh, I thought this was a good match to include because it does also bring up the history of the tag titles between the different promotions and where that led to the eventual unification of those belts. Uh, the Dudleys and the Hardys always put on good shows. This one had a spectacular ending with Jeff Hardy deciding to go for the kill and blowing it and biting the dust, allowing the Dudleys to unify the belts. You also had the entertainment, uh, the entertaining factor of Stacy Keebler at ringside. And you got Ball Heyman on the mic uh, with JR. So that was definitely a match worth worth checking out. The next uh, tag team also featured in an actual match, the Outsiders, Hall and Nash from the WCW. A lot of people loved this tag team back in the day. Uh, 96 Halloween Havoc was the match featured against Harlem Heat. So Harlem Heat actually made it into two separate matches on the set. thought that was kind of curious. Um, very enjoyable match, though. Uh, uh, surprisingly, I was actually entertained by this one, considering I don't really like any of the wrestlers that were in this match. The storytelling was kind of curious uh, and, and entertaining. kind of showed you where WCW was at that time. Uh, definitely fascinated by that one. And then uh, the next team featured was the Brain Busters, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. They were put in a match from uh, the Great American Bash 1988 against Nikita Koloff and Sting. Uh, great momentum shifts in this match. A really hot crowd. Strong technical style mixed in with some of the flair that Sting brought into the match. Um, time limit draw, though. This was a lengthy match to go to the time limit draw. Kind of a lame ending, uh, especially watching on the DVD set as no one goes over. You're kind of asking yourself, well, uh, what was the point of including that match? It didn't really achieve a whole lot. But uh, the fact that the crowd was so hot for this match and uh, it, it really, really shows where uh, the Brain Busters were and, uh, you know, their contributions to the overall tag team scene, especially coming out of the Four Horsemen. Uh, the next uh, grouping they had on there, Tribute to the Classics. We'll get to that one on the next uh, next clip here. I'm going to cut things short, and we'll go ahead and film uh, video two. We'll finish up our discussion of Allied Powers, the world's greatest tag teams. 